So there's an article that's out today in ProPublica, and it details how multiple Trump witnesses have received significant financial benefits from his business and campaign. And altogether, folks, I think they talk about nine different witnesses who surprisingly got bumps in pay. Their their daughter got hired to the campaign staff. I mean, just a lot of questionable dealings in the Trump campaign. So, you know, you think of the Trump machine as, you know, this this griff machine that is rolling out the notion that, you know, the judicial system is is weaponized, you know, that the elections have been rigged and all of this kind of stuff. Well, in addition to that, they also have this on the ground campaign that's rolling out a lot of benefits to people coincident with the investigators getting close to these people in terms of their questioning and asking them about the Trump campaign. When the investigators get close, it's like the gold mine opens up in the, in the Trump machine. So I just want to hit a few characters in here. One I want to talk about is Dan Scavino. He's in here. I also want to talk about Boris Epstein is how you pronounce his name. Boris Epstein. So the article says the benefits have flowed from Trump's business and campaign committees, according to a ProPublica analysis of public disclosures, court records, and securities filings. One campaign aide had his average monthly pay double from $26,000 to $53,500 a month. Another employee got a $2 million severance package, barring him from voluntarily cooperating with law enforcement. And one of the campaign's top officials had her daughter hired onto the campaign staff, where she is now the fourth highest paid employee. So, like I said, there's, there's a lot of people that they talk about in this article. I recommend that you read it. But we're going to skip all the way down to... <laughs> This fellow named Boris Epstein. Boris. It says one Trump aide who plays a key role in multiple cases is a lawyer named Boris Epstein, who became an important figure in Trump's effort to overturn the results of the 2020 election. A college classmate of one of Trump's sons, who worked on the 2016 campaign and briefly in the White House, Epstein was involved in assembling sets of false electors around the country after Trump lost the 2020 election. And Epstein's emails and texts have come up repeatedly in investigations. So really not a nice guy, right? Involved in the fake elector scheme to overturn the election. Good for you, Boris. In 2022, he testified before the Georgia grand jury that later indicted Trump on charges related to attempts to overturn the election. The FBI seized his phone. In April of 2023, he was interviewed by the federal special counsel. In early August of 2023, the special counsel charged Trump with conspiracy to defraud the United States and conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding as part of an effort to overturn the 2020 election. A couple of weeks later, the Georgia grand jury handed down an indictment accusing Trump of racketeering as part of a plot to overturn the election results in the state. From November of 2022 to August of 2023, the Trump campaign had paid Epstein's company an average of $26,000 a month. The month after the indictments, his pay hit a new high. He just won the jackpot, $50,000 a month, and it climbed in October to $53,500 a month, where it has remained ever since. Epstein is a contractor with the campaign, and the payments go to his company, which is called Georgetown Advisory which is based at a residential home in New Jersey. The company does not appear to have an office or other employees. Campaign filings say the payments are for communications and legal consulting. Not bad for a guy with working out of his home with no employees, 53500 a month. And here's the chart of those payments. It shows the, the low payments, you know, in the beginning, and then boom. In August of 2023, Trump is indicted in election interference cases in which Epstein is a witness. His pay goes through the roof. Bingo. And then let's move on to Dan Scavino, folks. And I believe Dan Scavino used to be Trump's caddy. Interesting little backstory on Dan Scavino. The article says Dan Scavino was a longtime communications aide who Trump once called the most powerful man in politics because he could post for Trump on the president's social media accounts. Scavino was among the small group of staff who had an up-close view of Trump during the final weeks of his presidency, a focus 
of the Congressional Inquiry into the January 6th insurrection and the criminal probe into election interference. In August of 2021, a month after the Congressional investigation began, securities filings show that the parent company behind True Social, Trump's social media company, gave Scavino a consulting deal that ultimately paid out $240,000 a year. Bingo! The next month, lawmakers sued or issued a subpoena to Scavino to ask him what the White House knew about the potential for violence before the attacks and what the what actions Donald Trump took to try to overturn the election results. The panel gave Scavino a half dozen extensions while negotiating with him, but he ultimately refused to testify or turn over documents and was held in contempt. In September of 2022, Scavino received a subpoena to testify before the criminal grand jury in the federal election interference probe. This time, he wasn't able to get out of it and was seen leaving the Washington, D.C. courthouse in May of 2023. Bits of Scavino's testimony were reported by ABC News, citing unnamed sources, though his recollections of Trump from January 6 painted the former president unfavorably. His reported testimony didn't include significant new information. He testified Trump was very angry that day, and despite pleas from aides to calm the Capitol rioters, Trump for hours was just not interested, he said, in taking action to stop it. When the testimony was reported, Trump's spokesperson said Scavino was one of the former president's most loyal allies. And his actual testimony shows just how strong President Trump is positioned in this case. Between getting the subpoena and testifying, Scavino was given a seat on the board of Trump social, of the Trump social media company, folks. Scavino was also granted a $600,000 retention bonus and a $4 million executive promissory note paid in shares, according to SEC filings. The company's public filings did not make clear when these deals were put into place. As one of the few aides who Trump was with on January 6, Scavino is likely to be called if Trump's election interference cases go to trial. Reached by ProPublica, Scavino declined to answer questions about how he got the board seat and other benefits from the Trump media company. It has nothing to do with any investigation, he says. Right, I'm sure. So folks, these are people who are going to be teary-eyed if Donald Trump doesn't win again, if he doesn't claim that second term. So you see the picture here. We have a machine, the Trump machine. It's not just what you see and what you hear. It's what you don't see. And a lot of times what you don't know. That powers it forward. Who knew that as investigators got closer to these people, Trump turned on the monetary faucets and flooded out the money to them for silence. And folks, that's in addition to this whole grand distraction that Donald Trump is engaged in. And the grand distraction, I mean rigged elections. The justice system is weaponized. That's all part of the grand distraction. And he needs this, this on several fronts. He needs the machine to have people like Dan Scavino and people like Boris Epstein to keep it moving forward. And he needs to keep the grand distraction going to fool the American public so that he can do things like this. And according to USA Today, this article that came out, Donald Trump says he raised nearly $53 million a day after his conviction. He needs that money to keep the whole thing going on. And in his view, hopefully if Donald Trump, he thinks, wins the second term, he'll be able to move a lot of these cases against him from the state courts to the federal courts where he can have his DOJ kill the cases. That's the grand plan, folks, in a nutshell. That is the grand plan of Trump. Till next time.